One of the problems as woodworkers that we all face is what to do with gaps and blemishes. Now I'm working on a project here, a mid-century style sideboard for my sister, and it's going to be made out of walnut. However, the pieces that I'm working with have some flaws in them. You can see there's a couple of knot holes here where part of the wood from the knot fell out. There's also some pieces here where I just have some small splits. In the final project, they're going to be buried on the inside of the case. Not that all noticeable, but I'm going to know that they're there. And I want to fill those up so that I have a nice smooth level surface. Now there's two ways to do this. The first way that I'm going to show, I actually learned from Logan and is pretty genius, which is kind of a surprise. And what it is, is starts with coffee grounds. Now these are just dry grounds before brewing up the coffee. And you can see that it's for, for a basket filter, so it's a medium grind here. What I'm going to do is just sprinkle the coffee grounds into this crack. And I'm also going to do this knot hole here. I'm going to leave them both overfilled to a certain extent so that I can sand and scrape them level. Now that's going to be the aggregate, so to speak, in our little blemish filling roll here. The binder is going to be some super glue. So any instant kind of glue here. I'm using a medium viscosity because I want it to soak in, but I don't want it just running all over. Now you're going to get it running around a little bit. That's not a big deal, but it's going to soak down into those coffee grounds. and set up in there. So I'll do the same thing over here. You can use a thin viscosity instant glue and have that work pretty well, but I found that sometimes it can be just a little too thin and takes longer and a little bit more to set up. So Let's move on to the other type of gap filler that I like to use. And uh, it involves another little powder here. It's starting to feel a little bit like an advanced potions making class. But what I have is the sanding dust from sanding the panels. So I just pulled it out of the filter of your random orbit sander, or actually from the filter in my shop vac. And you can see that it's obviously matches the color pretty well of the walnut. For the binder in this case, what I'm going to use is some liquid hide glue. So I'm going to pour a little puddle of the liquid hide glue. Then I'm going to sprinkle the sanding dust over the top and now just mix it up What you're looking for is something a little bit like a dough consistency, not too runny, but thick enough that you can spread it on. So I'm going to use just a little bit of this here, and I'm going to fill this knot hole. And we can be able to compare how these two different solutions work. You can choose which one works best for you. So I'll just overfill it a little bit on this knot hole. Now for this larger gap here, I want to show you something that I often do, especially if I'm working on open poured woods uh, or other seams. What I don't want is too much glue seeping into the surrounding grain because that can cause some problems with finishing later on. So I'm just going to use a couple of strips of masking tape here and mask off the area that I'm going to fill. The other thing here is that when if I squeegee it flush with the masking tape, I know that the filler is going to be a little proud of the surface and I can easily sand or scrape that off. So I'm going to take that here and we'll press that into place.
Now comes the hard part. We're going to wait for this to dry. The instant glue, about 15, 20 minutes, just to make sure that I know that it's good and dry. This is probably going to be a few hours because we're using liquid hide glue. We'll come back, peel this all off, scrape and sand it flush, and you can see just how well these two solutions work. And we're back. Now I've left the glue and the filler dry overnight. Now obviously for the instant glue, it doesn't have to be that long, but with the hide glue and the sawdust, I do wanna allow a few hours for that to fully set up and dry. So let's see how it looks here. You could see the uh, instant glue patches that we made here. Looks a lot worse than what it's gonna be final here. And here's the one of the spots with the hide glue and the sanding dust. And then I'll peel away the masking tape here. And we can see how that one turned out. It's really special that it's coming off in really small pieces. All right, so it's overfilled. What we wanna do now is remove a much, as much of that excess material as possible. I'm gonna get things started with a carbide scraper. This one has a wood handle on it that's really nice for being able to apply a lot of pressure. Now after the carbide scraper, you can just go with a sanding block and coarse sandpaper on there, or uh, I like to switch to a card scraper. All right, and that brings us down to, we have a pretty smooth surface here. Then once we hit it with a sanding block, the sanding block kind of unifies the surface a little bit. So you can see now that while we do know that there was something there, we have a smooth surface to work from and build up a finish on. And now it just looks like part of the natural coloring of the walnut that we have going on here. Now, just to finish things off, I'm gonna end up going with an oil-based finish on the project, but I don't wanna apply that right now but I can approximate the look of it by wiping on a little uh, mineral spirits here. So we can kind of see what it's gonna look like in the finished piece. So you can see on both examples here, the coffee grounds here and then the two the sanding dust and the glue both did a great job. Uh, I like the fact that they blend in well color and tone wise to the surrounding material and they aren't gonna be affected by oil-based finishes when you put them on. So there you have it. When you're working with walnut and you still wanna use some of those pieces that might have some cosmetic flaws, you have two great solutions here to be able to get a smooth surface and deal with those defects that acknowledges that it comes from a wood board and still end up with a great looking project.